Colby here with Volquartz and Firearms, and today we're going to be installing our accurizing kit in the Ruger Mark II, Mark III series. Today we're going to be doing it on the Ruger Mark II, but the same steps will apply to the Mark III. Some tools may be a little bit different. If you do not feel comfortable installing this kit by yourself, you can send your pistol in and we can install the kit for you. So let's dive into the installation. For this installation, you will need a rubber mallet, a pair of needle nose pliers, a flathead screwdriver, a 3 seconds Allen wrench, which is gonna be used to remove your grip screws, whereas the flathead is gonna be for grip screws as well and to take the mainspring tool out, a 1 16th Allen wrench, which is included in the kit, a 1 inch, 1 8th inch punch, and if you need your manual, you can have it here to reference. Included in your accurizing kit, First, you'll receive your hammer bushing, your hammer, and your extended bolt release. You'll also receive your sear and sear spring, and then you'll also receive your trigger, which will have your pre-travel and over-travel screw already installed with no Loctite. You'll also get the other over-travel screw for a 2245 frame, your trigger plunger spring, your trigger plunger, and then your 1 16th Allen wrench. And with that, we can start with the disassembly of the pistol. First, we need to remove the magazine, set that aside, and ensure that the, the firearm is clear, which it is. So once we have everything clear with the safety disengaged, we're going to pull the trigger to, dis to let the hammer come forward. Once that's done, we can remove the mainspring here in the back of the pistol where you're going to use a flathead screwdriver and we're just going to pry the latch back which allows the mainspring to come out like so and then we're going to just pull the mainspring down from the pistol and set it aside once the mainspring is out you're going to remove the upper from the frame um, so this one is tight so this is where the rubber mallet is going to come in we're just going to tap the back of the upper until it pops off and we can set the upper aside. Once you have the upper removed, we're gonna remove the grip panels if they are removable. This one is gonna use a flathead screwdriver. If you have a Mark III, it will use a 3 seconds Allen wrench to remove the grip screws. So we're going to remove the grip screws on both sides of the pistol. Once you've removed the grip screws, you can remove the grips. Once you've removed the grips, we can start disassembling the rest of the pistol. First, we're gonna take your eighth inch punch and punch out the hammer pin here in the back. So we're just gonna push it through. I usually like to keep my thumb on the bolt release and then my pointer finger on the hammer. We're just gonna pull that out. And then you can take the bolt release off and set it aside. Next, you can just grab the hammer and pull it forward off the, out of the frame and set it aside as well as the hammer bushing. Once you have that out, you can take your safety out. So I usually just keep a little pressure here on the back and you're just gonna push down and it should pop out nice and easy. Once you have the hammer and the safety out, we can remove the sear pin, which is going to allow the sear and sear spring to come out using your eighth inch punch. You're just gonna punch that pin out, set it aside, and your sear and sear spring will come out. When doing this, if you have to tip the pistol up, sometimes the trigger uh, plunger spring and the trigger plunger will come out, so we'll set that aside as well. Next will remove the trigger. So with that, um, you'll use your eighth inch punch as well as your flathead screwdriver or your 1 16th Allen wrench. I like to use the Allen wrench. And we're gonna push down on the uh, trigger pin keeper, which is a little spring. So we're gonna push down on that. And then from the other side of the frame, 
we're gonna push the trigger pin out like so. Once that trigger pin is out, you can pull the uh, disconnector and trigger out as well. And then your bolt release itself will come out and then we're going to remove the bolt release plunger and spring as well. So now we have everything disassembled and now we can start working on the installation of the accurizing kit. Some of the factory parts that you will not need for the installation of the accurizing kit is gonna be the old factory trigger, the hammer and hammer bushing, as well as the bolt release sear and sear spring and the trigger plunger spring and trigger plunger. With that, we're gonna start with the installation. First, I like to start with the trigger where I'm gonna apply some Loctite to the screws. So you just, you just need a little bit on both just to get on the threads. And then I like to take that 1 16th Allen wrench and just get the over travel screw uh, just a little bit past flush. And then with the pre-travel screw, we're just gonna back this up. It doesn't need to be fully backed out, but I just like it to be where the top of the screw is just starting to protrude out the front of the trigger. So with that, we can put the R trigger onto the factory disconnector and set that down. Um, and then we're gonna take the factory plunger for the bolt release and the spring. And we're gonna set this down inside the frame. There is a flat on one side, so you want that flat to be facing this side of the frame. So we're just gonna drop that in. It can be a little bit tricky just to get that straightened out, so I'll take a flathead screwdriver and just flip it over. If you need to, you can take it back out and just get it aligned properly. Once you have that in there, um, I like to take the trigger and disconnector and we're gonna drop that in. And we're going to line it up with the hole on the side of the frame here. And we're gonna take the trigger pin and insert it back into the frame. You might have to depress that re trigger pin retainer. So I'll take that eighth inch pin or roll pin punch and just depress it so you can get that pin all the way through the trigger. You don't want this trigger pin to go all the way through and flush on the other side of the frame because we still have to put the bolt release in. So we're just gonna push it back through enough to get the bolt release itself. We're gonna drop that in. Usually I like to get this part in this little slot in the frame here. And we're just gonna push it forward. And if you don't have that pin backed out far enough, just push it a little bit further and then we're going to push the bolt release forward so it's under spring tension and continue to push the trigger pin through you'll hear it click into place and that's just from that trigger uh, spring that holds the pin in place so once we have all that done we can start installing the sear and the sear spring so we're going to take the sear pin and insert it into this hole right here on the frame. It doesn't need to be all the way in, but enough to where you can grab your needle nose pliers and you put the sear spring in. I like to hold the pistol up vertical and I like to just rest my arm back here while I'm getting everything set up properly. With the sear spring, it does have a short leg and a long leg. The short leg is gonna be going towards the top of the frame where the long leg will be going down inside the frame. And you want the short, side or both sides facing towards the back of the frame. So we're just gonna grab it like so. And it does have a, another pin down here in the frame and that's where that long leg is gonna sit behind. So we're gonna drop it down and put it over the pin. Once you have that, we're gonna grab the sear. And so it does have a profile like so. And you want this rounded part facing the back of the frame. So we're gonna grab it and then line it up with the pin 
and push the pin all the way through. So once the pin's all the way through, a good way to check that the sear spring is in properly, if you push on the sear down towards the trigger, it should have some spring tension. So once the sear's in properly, we're going to grab the factory safety and we're gonna put the, uh, the boss that's sticking up, we're gonna put that in and then I like to just keep some pressure on it like so. And then we're gonna have to push that sear down, which allows the safety to move down so you can al align the pin. So then we're gonna take our extended bolt release and we're gonna put it on the bolt release itself and line it up here. Then we're gonna take the hammer pin, we're gonna push it into that hole. And you don't wanna push it all the way through because we still have to get the hammer and hammer bushing in. So I like to just leave it flush with the safety on the inside of the frame. Now we're going to install the trigger plunger spring and the trigger plunger and set it on top. And then with that, we'll take the hammer and the hammer bushing. So on the hammer, you wanna put the bushing on the right side of the hammer like that. So it sits inside the disconnector hole. And then we're gonna put that hammer bushing inside the hole of the disconnector. And we're just gonna push this down. And if you don't have that pin backed out enough, we're just gonna pull it out a little bit so you can get the hammer down all the way. And then this can be a little tricky, but we're just gonna finagle the hammer till you can get that pin through. And then you have once you have that pin all the way through, we've completed the installation of the accurizing kit. Um, so now we're just gonna put the upper back onto the frame and install the mainspring so we can adjust the trigger over travel screw and pre-travel screw. So we're gonna put the upper back on. This one is tight, um, but then we're gonna put the mainspring back in. Once you get the mainspring in, you're gonna hold the trigger, tap it in, and then we're gonna have to give that hammer some tension. So we're gonna close the mainspring. The best thing to do is uh, rack the slide so it resets the hammer. Um, so right now it does have um, pre-travel. You can tell here if it doesn't, when you rack the bolt, if it doesn't have, if it's not doing anything, more than likely that pre-travel screw is in too far, so it's not allowing the trigger to reset. So if that happens, you'll use your 1 16th Allen wrench, and we're just gonna go in here and back that screw, that pre-travel screw out as, as much as you desire for your trigger pull. Um, and then on the over-travel screw, we're gonna just pull the trigger and once you pull the trigger, either you're gonna have a lot of um, over travel after that um, hammer drops, so you can adjust that um, as desired. Uh, it's totally up to the, the user. And then once everything works properly, the trigger resets, we can go ahead and put the grip panels back on. So align the grips back up. We're going to use our flathead screwdriver to tighten the grip screws. Do that on both sides. On these wood ones, you don't want to over tighten them. Uh, just get them nice and snug. Just because you can break the grip and if the screws go too far in, it can cause problems with the magazine going into the frame. Got to get the holes lined up. And now you've completed the installation of an, your accurizing kit and your Ruger Mark II or Mark III. If you do not feel comfortable doing this installation, you can send your pistol in with the accurizing kit and we can install it for you. If you have any further questions, contact us at volkortson.com.